So back in February, I uh, made an inquiry to uh, uh, to a tow towing company to get my tractor back from Bedminster. Uh, the 4960, anyways, the one that burnt. So here it is. Boy, doesn't she look sweet? <laughs> Still got the John Deere emblem. I thought somebody would have nicked that for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, closer look at this tractor, you know, after it burnt. I mean, look at this stuff. Here's all the wire connectors and everything. This is what burned the tractor with these wiring harnesses. You can see how thick they are. But, anyways, closer inspection of the tractor, it's really not that bad. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Um, so what I'm going to do... Oh, and the other thing is that I, uh was at Wangers of Myerstown. They went $18,000 for that engine. 18000 for that motor. Um, so, definitely worth overhauling. Now, this is junk. This part here. The muffler, these mufflers are extremely expensive. The hood, I don't know if the hood's any good. You know, to be honest with you, when they get hot like that, it, it changes them. The metal gets really soft. So, but anyway, my main concern and the concern of the uh, the guys that I talked to on this tractor were obviously these valves assemblies uh, because they're aluminum. And they asked if they melted. I said, I don't know. I said, well, if they melted, then that's, it's going to be a lot harder to fix it. Um, up, up in there, uh, the other thing that they were concerned with in overhauling this tractor was, or rebuilding the tractor, was the uh, right up on top there well you see not all my wires burned either which is a good thing um, right up on top there where the transmission plate is the cover is well that's where the uh, power shift transmission is and they were concerned as to how hot that got because there's o-rings in those power shift packs that can cause major problems well obviously I can see it now that it is uh, it is not that, you know, it never got that hot. Um, you can see here, this valve body here did get hot. It did get hot, but it didn't melt. Uh, that spring melted, but I think the heat was really, I don't know. I think that spring melted because of an electrical wire, to be honest with you. See that wire hanging there? And that thing, there's still paint on the valve body, so I'm not, I don't think that it got that hot. But I won't know until I get the cab off. Um, obviously the intercooler is history, and the turbocharger is history. That melted up in there. Um, but the engine itself, I'm going to say that it's alright. You can't see, it didn't take the paint off of the uh, head all the way, just a little bit, and the fire did start here with these wires. You see that? That hot wire? that's what shorted out somewhere's in there and then it burnt all the way up this wire and into that mess there the fire actually started up and underneath here that's that's where it started uh, so you know closer inspection of the tractor I think I'm gonna make a go of it I'm gonna start collecting parts I need a cab um, I'm willing to pay up to ten thousand dollars for a cab if it's worth it uh, the intercooler you know I can get those anywhere these parts and pieces you know no big deal um, it's going to need a new radiator cowling, probably a new rad. I'm not sure about that yet because it did get hot all the way up to here. But I don't think it didn't melt the fins, so yeah. So it doesn't really look too god awful bad. Now we stripped the weights off of it because we didn't want anybody else to do it for us. So I stripped the weights off of it just to uh, make sure that it would, uh, yeah. I would have everything that I needed when I when it came down to it. So, anyways, another good sign is you know I had just changed the engine oil on this tractor before I went over to the field, and there is, it's exactly where it was when I filled it. There's no water in the engine, so obviously if there's no water in the oil pan, then there's no water in that engine. It'll probably fire off. Uh, it does have a full tank of diesel fuel, or three quarters, or better than three quarters of a tank of diesel fuel. And I did have somebody else ask me if the uh, 
if the tire went flat the one that I patched well it's a funny thing this tire was not flat about a month and a half ago I was over there and the tire was still inflated but when they moved it and put it up on the, when they moved it around a little bit it must have did something to it because the tires flat now uh, it's still a tubeless tire so but I'm sure it'll hold air uh, if if I put air into it I don't know for how long but if I do rebuild the tractor um, you know I'll just get a new tire for that size so that side because this tire here is not junk it's actually only gotten a little bit of use on it uh, what else can I say about the damn thing um, <coughs> other than I got a cold yeah this is the thing that I hate, these stupid little e-clips, they fall out of there, so I just use bailing twine to hold them on, so, but, anyways, yeah, so there's the 4960, it is home, yes, the tire, oh, there, the tire split out on the inside, that's what happened to it, so it didn't just have a split on the outside, I had one on the inside, this tire was faulty, I think, from factory, so, but anyways, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, let me know if you think I should rebuild it or scrap it, not scrap it, but part it out, I mean, I'll part it out, it's no big deal. Um, but I think that it's still got some life left in her. Or maybe it's got life for somebody else's tractor. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching.